there's nothing like being surrounded by a large group of holiday hire boaters, all with windlasses in their hands, stood around watching you while you uh, sweat your doodads. tale of Aslan and the gent to be seen their travels before. Well, did you know that they're back again and cruising the canals once more? Sold up downsides for a minimalised alternative life afloat. Going boldly where thousands have been before. One man, one life, one boat. It's a very nice tug deck indeed. And now a short meander to the seventh lock. And after that, the final two on their own. And then the open seas, so to speak. Ah, oh, we've gained a good bit of height. Still three more locks to go. So we'll gain a bit more. And then we're at the summit of the Oxford Canal. And as I said earlier, from then on, every lock we encounter is downhill all the way to Oxford. Happy days. Hello. The seventh lock. I thought for a moment there that was two SAS soldiers about to abseil off the side of the helicopter. Aslan is chugging along beautifully. After the final two locks, just a bit further up here, it is seven miles to Fenny Compton, which uh, for Aslan, I mean, that's a good day's travelling. Um, I'm going to have to see how I feel. I don't know if I'll get all the way to Fenny Compton, but in terms of getting food and editing schedule, it would be nice to get there today because if I spend tomorrow travelling, that's an entire day of editing that I lose. Um, so can I sacrifice an extra day in order to not bust the gut trying to get to Fenny Compton today which will be I'm told it's about two and a half hours to get there and it's now half past three and by the time I've done the locks I'm gonna say half past four so that's half six that's arriving at seven o'clock with no guarantee that I'll be able to get a mooring where I want. Yeah, the folks on the boat behind me, uh, they were uh, thinking about Fenny Compton as well. They don't have a Nicholson guide and they asked me how far it is after the last lock. And I said seven miles. And they were of the same opinion as me. Oh, no, perhaps not. I 
A rather unusual mooring spot, it has to be said. Wouldn't be my first choice. Under this huge tree. And not much in the way of mooring either. Twenty acre bridge and the eighth lock is just shortly after. That bridge ain't twenty acres. The eighth lock. There's this very sudden feeling that winter has arrived. Just today. And in the last ten minutes, it's gone windy and grey and actually cold. Good job it's forecast to uh, only be a few days and then back to uh, sunshine again. I hope. This is a pub in Marston Dells, is it? Ooh. My guidebook's 20 years old. Ah, oh, the last one. It is a beautiful sight. Well, just this lock then, and then I'm thinking a couple of miles to somewhere in the region of Priors Hardwick, which is another little canal side village. Aslan and I are now at the summit of the Oxford Canal. It's all downhill from now on. It's now about half past four, and I set off at 11 this morning, so that's five and a half hours. That includes getting water and travelling about two miles to the first lock. And I'm thinking a couple more miles, as I say, to Priors Hardwick.
You all right? You all right? Ain't that just typical? As soon as I get through all the locks, three boats turn up. A very sharp bend coming up, and this is a characteristic of the canal, all the way to Fenny Compton. And the canal practically goes back on itself. Now it was a good thought, but there's no way in a million years I'd get to Fenny Compton tonight. Far too twisty and my concentration is waning. Bridge 122 and the next available piece of Armco, I think will do me. As long as it's positioned correctly, of course. Hello, hello. It looks as though someone has taken their boat and put it on permanent dry dock. I have never, ever seen anything like that. It's not even possible for them to move the boat out of the mooring. Though I suppose technically that means the boat isn't on Canal and River Trust waters. So no need to pay a licence. We're right in the middle of nowhere, where it meets up with the back of beyond. The bridges on this part of the Oxford are beginning to take on a style of their own. You're out, me duck. Bit of a sore foot there. Some Armco coming up. Fairly promising, but right under these trees, and I'm going to end up with sap and all kinds of things dripping on the roof, which I don't want. No, far too much tree cover. And experience tells me that on the canals, you can most times afford to be choosy when it comes to moorings.
about two feet too narrow for my liking. It'll be very difficult to see because of the sun right in front. But this is going to be it. As soon I can get close to the edge. There's a lot of silt. Now, the water levels drop so much by about, well, you can see about six inches there. I can't get near the edge. Oh well, onward. Still have a good few hours of uh, useful sunlight. There is a bit more armco along here. I'll try there. I said, do you have availability here for one night? What, what? Yeah, it's under trees and it's right by a bridge. Right, this one looks promising. If I can get close to the edge, that is it. Well, I could always stop in a teepee. Thank heavens. Yep, I can get right to the edge. I wasn't getting concerned. Oh, I've been dreaming about that. That was uh, quite intensive, that. Um, yeah, like I said, I just kept doing the locks and didn't seem to get anywhere. It's like I was stuck at number four, lock after lock. Um, but I'm here now. It's absolutely lovely. Um, and that will do me for today. Um, five miles. Well, thereabouts to Fenny Compton tomorrow. Hopefully I find somewhere to moor up nearby and then I'll be able to get some shopping and so on and then knuckle down to the next five days of editing. Um, yeah, it keeps you on your toes, you know, and it keeps you fit and it keeps the old mind going. But yeah, that'll do me. I'll see you in the morning. See you for now. I slept like a log and now for the remaining five miles to Fenny Compton and for this part the canal takes a very eccentric course indeed twisting winding hairpin turns and so on heading south east west even north in parts with Fenny Compton at the end of it. And for me, the golden prize of a co-op and food. I said in an earlier video that I was concerned about new build that I'd seen on other canals around the country. And I don't want to speak too soon, but so far I think I've seen next to nothing. I 
I'm also pleased to see that there's no sign of that darn HS2. The countryside around here is completely unspoilt. Except for farming, of course. But then farming is the countryside, isn't it? The countryside that we know. Not the original, original countryside. That went hundreds of years ago. The reason for the extreme twistiness on this part of the Oxford is down to the age of the canal. Later canals were built incorporating more advanced technologies of the time, like tunnels. But the very early canals simply followed the contours of the landscape. Hence, in the space of just a mile or so today, we've been heading east and then southeast, southwest and now we're heading west. And very shortly the canal will make another dramatic turn and we'll be heading north and then northeast, northwest and then west again before eventually turning southwards. There is something going on here. It can't be HS2. Please. Don't tell me they're ripping a swathe through this landscape. Bridge 129, which is down in my Nicholson guide, as Ladder Bridge. Now, obviously, this isn't the original Ladder Bridge. Uh, just add confirmation, yes, it is HS2. Two cyclists there uh, weren't too pleased that the uh, footpath is now closed. Well, it's the first time I've been able to look along it
Now I've made clear my thoughts on the HS2 before, so I won't say much more about it. Except enjoy your 15 minute time saving, which you won't actually be getting, because they made a mistake. I asked the cyclist back there, is this HS2? And one of them went, yeah. And I went, Pugh. And he said, exactly. And the other guy went, <laughs> solidarity, brother. One thing you can be absolutely sure of, if ever a politician or a government or the media claim that the majority are behind something, you can bet your bottom dollar that it's the exact opposite. And back to some proper countryside. very strong sense of history along this part of the Oxford. History as old as the oak trees themselves, I'd say.